Not long ago, in a galaxy not too far away, shaped strangely like my garage. Adventures in Engine Nerding. Please excuse my voice, it's a little hoarse, but I assure you this video is COVID free. Today's video, I want to talk about that desire to modify things to make them suit your own needs. Uh, specifically for this, things can always be made better, whether it's uh, adding an accessory, modifying something, taking away weight, adding power, strength, whatever. They can always be made better. And if you're an engine nerd like me, and chances are if you're watching this video, you probably are, then you get me. Now that I've been using this CNC machine a little bit, I found a couple of things that I wanted to add to the um, use of it, sort of accessories for uh, making parts a little easier. Number one, earplugs. This thing is loud. It's uh, very important to wear earplugs. You'll hurt your ears, do real damage. So that was number one. Number two, I have my CNC machine on top of these pieces of wood, and I don't feel like they're, they seem like they can move around a little bit, and that worries me that it's going to uh, slide off. So I decided to make myself some little 3D printed stands for it. So they have a little groove in them that is set up for, I designed them and printed them on my 3D printer for this purpose. They're symmetrical, so they can be used on either side. And they will just go in like this. I'll lift it up drop it down in there and it will eventually slide in. There we go. And then I can screw it down with with that on each of the four corners and then it the whole wood should move with it. Now it's not held in vertically but the weight of it should hold it in just fine. Got a little snag in the works over here. This wiring harness holder right there sits flat to the ground. And so my little holder, it's not gonna, the um, side of the machine is not gonna go down into this groove properly. So I'm gonna have to figure out what to do about that. I think I might pull off the uh, harness holder and drill another hole and then just lift this up slightly out of the way so that I can get that uh, get that to sit down in there properly. The next accessory I got is these little clamps. They come down and they sort of snap in place like that and will hold. You can set them up for whatever your, your stock is uh, to hold your things in place. And I've got them bolted down with, with some, uh, I believe they're M6. Yes, M6, about 20 screws. See that little rubber foot holds it down pretty well 
and seems like a pretty good little accessory. Now, if you're like me and you'd like to sustain your spoil board, the main thick spoil board, as long as possible, you might want to use small spoil boards underneath of your stock. This is 1 8 inch thick, very consistent. And so you can lay your stock on top of that and clamp it down. And then if your uh, CNC process goes a little bit through, it will mess this up, not your spoil board. And these things were pretty inexpensive online. And like I said, very consistent in thickness, so they worked, worked well. Clamping and positioning your stock is uh, a critical element to making good parts that are going to be, you know, squared in your, in your stock or um, then you don't have to cut out a perimeter to make it, make it work right. And, you know, most stock is going to come in some rectangular shape. And like I said, I have these little spoil boards to go underneath. Then I can take this, slide it into here. Now it's positioned forward in the Y, then I can position the X like this, and this actually has a little bit of a, uh, a lip on it, so it works as a clamp also. Same thing with this one, so this overlaps onto the stock, and when I crank it down on the uh, screw, it will hold it in place, in addition to positioning it well. See, that'll screw down in like this. I can clamp these down, and then I've got my, my stock clamped in a, in a strong perpendicular, you know, to the parallel to the, to the spoil board in both directions, the X and Y. And it overlaps a little bit, so I'm going to lose a little bit of the edge of this. But I'm not cutting, you know, I can, I can always uh, accommodate for that in my uh, cutting system. And I just designed these in my uh, in FreeCAD and then made them on my 3D printer. Printed them with I think like a 50% uh, fill. You could do them in you could do them solid if you wanted to make them really strong, but 50% still fill seems to be okay. It doesn't flex. It doesn't really have much flex to it. For these 3D printed clamps, you could make. Them so that they would hold almost any size stock and just get different size bolts and if you wanted to make it for a thicker piece of stock you could just make the whole thing thicker and that underside piece of it here you just make that a little bit less thick than your stock and then when you go to clamp it down it will pull down on top of it since I'm planning on cutting aluminum as a regular thing with this CNC, I found that my parts got too hot and they started melting edges and uh, caught up the the drill or caught up the uh, CNC bit, and so it it didn't look good. You know, my parts ended up not looking good. So I determined that it's getting too hot, and so I've decided to add an airflow system pointing at the bit. And so that will be my next project, is to add that in. I'm gonna um, connect up the hose here, run it through the wiring loom and out and over to my air compressor. To mount the air blower for the, uh, the cooling air bill, uh, blower, which will also blow chips out of the way, which is going to help the, the uh, cuts be smoother, but it's also, a, it's also a cooler. So to mount it, I've got a 5 millimeter screw here, and I've bought a bag of these things, which you can just stick in here, turn sideways, and screw in the, in the, the uh, machine screw, and it'll clamp it in, in place. And this one is in there pretty firmly right now. To install the air hose for my blower, my plan is to just run it inside of the wiring loom. 
or tread or whatever you want to call this thing. And these things, well, that one doesn't want to pop right up, but they can pop up and open and run the uh, hose inside of there. Out from here, up and down to the air, up through the loom, and then out to the air compressor. Well, as usual, I get started on something and then realize I probably should have done it a different way. So what I'm going to need to do is come in from over here, feed the hose through and run it this way, because starting on this end meant that now I have to feed this whole thing through the through this housing for the for the loom. And that just seems stupid. It'll take me less time to just uh, kind of redo it. So that gave me a really nice clean routing for the hose. But what happens is when I put this in here, it's rubbing on the other portion on the upper portion of the tractor feed. So I think I can take this and run it behind here. and then come up under like this. Now with a few minor tweaks, I've got it. So it's back behind there. It's not touching this tractor tread and comes around here. It's not touching the motor drive and it's out of the way of, of this. So I think that seems like a really clean setup. It's barely visible. Now I just gotta make the other end connect up to my air compressor. I bought a hose that came with a little kit. It came with a bunch of uh, connectors, some Teflon tape, a little cutter, and um, these are all quick release or uh, shark bite or whatever you call them. Um, connectors, I am going to just, uh, this is the one thing that I had to buy or get from my, my uh, air compressor setup stuff. So I'll add a little Teflon tape onto this, screw it in here, and then connect it up. And this thing should be ready to go. I'm just gonna leave my hose full length for, for now so I can pull this thing across the room to my air compressor if I need to. And there it is. One more modification that I want to do and I will eventually get to is to fix the guards on the side here. These things are totally inadequate because it's actually, the screw leads are actually below the level of where it's cutting. Um, the chips fly off and you can see that I've gotten some on the screw leads 
down in here. You can actually see some aluminum chips on the screw leads. And that is just not good. We need to avoid that. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of <clears throat> plexiglass or carbonate or whatever, acrylic, and put it there. And either I'll just use a straight piece like that or I'll bend it so that it takes the place of this and comes up and maybe even bends back over above here slightly so that there'll be much less chance of that getting in uh, those chips getting into the screw leads. That's going to wrap up this adventure in engine nerding. I hope you got some good ideas for your own modifications. And you can leave me a comment if you think uh, you've got some better ideas for mine. Thanks for watching.